man of God that's called of God that's born again is not going to tell you that it's okay to shack up. He's not going to tell you that it's okay to commit fornication. He's not going to tell you it's okay to commit adultery. He's not going to tell you that it's okay to lie, to steal, to cheat. He's not going to tell you that if he's called of God. And so therefore, if they're, if they're telling you that it's okay, turn your head. God understands they're false prophets. They're false pastors. They've never been called by God and they're not saved. And you pastors sitting in front of that television and you congregation is sitting under them. Shame on all of you. Because I'm telling you that sin is sin. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. I'm the biggest sinner in the county. I don't willfully go out and sin, but I have sin in my life and I have to repent continuously asking God to forgive me. And I mean it. I, when I repent, I repent from my heart and God forgives. But I'm not going to tell you that it's all right to do it because you're going to stand before God and so am I and we're going to give an account for every word that leaves our mouth. And we better be warned if we love them. The Bible says God chastens us because he loves us. He corrects us because he loves us. He beats us or spanks us because he loves us. So if, if Christ is going to spank me and, 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 and chastise me because he loves me, shouldn't I warn you because I love you? Because if I've got the love of Christ in here, I, I'm supposed to love you. I may not like some of your ways, and you may not like my ways. I might not like the way you comb your hair. I may not like the clothes you wear. I may not like wh- the way you do, but I'm to love you. And if I love you, I want to tell you the truth. And that's what it's all about. Sister uh, Kathy Dysinger singing for the glory of the Lord. Make her welcome as she sings another song for God's glory. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Call on Jesus. When you call on him, he'll answer. Isn't that something when you're in need? Just know that he's always there. I have been all through the scripture, but I want to start right here in John chapter 5. The gospel according to John chapter 5. I want to read a verse to you that jumped out at me when, after I went over there and sat down a moment ago. I knew that it, it was a, a verse that I needed, and, and God just took me straight to it. John five fourteen is the verse I want to read. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Sin no more, please. Sin no more. Jesus didn't ask him to go and, and straighten his life. He commanded him, sin no more lest something worse come about thee. This man had been paralyzed for, I think, 38 years. Thirty-eight years, verse 5. He had been laying by the pool of Bethesda. Thirty-eight years he went without walking. And Christ came by and told him to rise and take up his bed and walk. And the man was obedient to the word of God. He obeyed the word of God. Jesus didn't say, well, please take up your bed and try to walk. He said, take up thy bed and walk. And the man did what Christ said. Then the scribes and the Pharisees and the high priests and everybody got a little upset. We don't do things that way. We, we just don't do things that way. And, and therefore, they got a little bit upset with him. Everybody got mad at Jesus because it was a Sabbath day. It was a sun, Well, it was their Sabbath, which is a Saturday, but it was their Sabbath, their holy day. We don't do things like that on the Sabbath. That's not part of our tradition. And so they went to the man and said, who told you to do that? And he said, well, I don't know who the man was. All I know is he came by and told me to do it, and I got up and did it, and I've been laying there for 38 years. And so the man that was healed went into the temple of God, and Jesus went in after him. Verse 11, and he, he answered them, He that made me hold the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. And they asked him, What man is that that said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And, when he, and he that was healed wist not, or knew not, who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a, a multitude being in that place. He'd kind of mixed himself into the crowd. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you, or come unto thee. Church, can we not learn something from this? 